to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. First of all, I apologize. There's been um, some last minute um, scheduling and rescheduling. So the final dates for those of you who are following the Thanet redevelopment process, the planning board will be holding a special meeting next week on Tuesday, February 18th, starting at 7.30 p.m. And they will be taking up the um, consideration of the redevelopment plan ordinance for the Thanet properties and reviewing it for consistency with the master plan. The next night on Wednesday, February 19th, the council will be having a special meeting. That meeting will start at 7 p.m. and the council will be holding a public hearing and vote on the uh, redevelopment plan ordinance as well as taking up um, the top three resolutions on the agenda tonight, those are all going to be moved to the meeting on the 19th. So the resolution of need for Princeton Senior Living Affordable Housing Project, the, um, and the two resolutions designating the redevelopers. Um, and in addition, we'll be considering um, the uh, redevelopers agreement with Avalon Bay that evening. Um, so that will all be on the 19th of February. Is that correct? Yeah, Wednesday the 19th of February. So um, we apologize for um, moving around, especially that planning board meeting, but now we're all set with those two dates. Um, so now we'll move on to approval of the minutes. We have many sets of minutes here for our review tonight from October 14th, October 21st, October 28th, October 30th, November 7th, November 12th, and November 18th. Um, and I would ask that um, the only people who are at those meetings should be um, voting to uh, approve the minutes. So is there a motion to approve? Uh, I'd just like to say I had a minor amendment on one of the minutes, which I sent to uh, both uh, Ms. Champion and, uh, and Ms. Williams, and, and hopefully that change got made. But uh, yep, thank you. Okay. And uh, I would be happy to move those sets of minutes. Okay. Second. So it's been moved by Ms. Niedergang and seconded by Mr. Cohen. Any other discussion or corrections on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, minutes passed unanimously, and now we come to announcements. And I will start on my right with Ms. Lambros. Any announcements? No, no announcements. No Ms. announcements. Ms. Mr. Cohen? Nope. One quick one, and if you'll bear with me, I think uh, this is something that we I'm going to probably be doing at uh, every meeting going forward uh, because it's, uh, it's critical. Uh, so uh, I think everyone's pretty much aware that the 2020 census is uh, coming up. April 1st is Census Day, uh, but before then, uh, we need to um, ensure that, uh, that we get the word out, out so that we can ensure m maximum participation uh, because in addition to determining uh, the number uh, or numbers as far as representatives in the legislature, it also determines uh, the funding that our community receives for the next 10 years. So uh, this uh, today, Council, uh, Councilman uh, Dwayne Williamson and I uh, met with our complete count committee, and this is made up of uh, community partners, uh, also the schools, uh, and others who, uh, who would be uh, organizations also that are serving uh, the community that w that's historically hard to count. And so we're, uh, we're working on outreach and messaging materials. But one thing that um, for everybody that's here, and also if you can relay, uh, there's many opportunities where we could already be putting the word out, whether it's at your houses of worship, at community meetings, neighborhood meetings, PTOs, every opportunity that we have where there's an audience, we should uh, be uh, reminding folks uh, that the census is coming and the importance of ensuring that everybody gets counted. Uh, none for me. Um, I just had a um, few announcements. The first one is um, this past Friday, um, Princeton presented its affordable housing plan um, in court. 
and we were successful at the fairness hearing, so we were very gratified to hear that, and the judge had some very nice things to say about Princeton's plan, um, as did Fair Share Housing Center. So we're very pleased to be past that um, critical juncture, and now we are in the compliance phase, so um, we will be extremely busy over the next few months um, in passing the um, associated ordinances, uh, zoning ordinances, putting together the plans, and implementing the, our affordable housing settlement. Um, in addition, um, I wanted to mention that on uh, this Thursday evening at 6 p.m., there will be a meeting, um, a, a community meeting about Witherspoon Street um, and it's going to be hosted by the engineering department and the planning department, and we're interested in getting community feedback um, as we start that process of reimagining Witherspoon Street um, and making improvements there, both to um, pedestrian, bicycle, um, transit improvements, public art, um, looking also at Heinz Plaza. So we invite you all to that meeting. It's going to be in the other building at Monument Hall um, from 6 to 8 p.m., and then the planning board meeting will be, I'm sorry, yeah, that's it. There was going to be a planning board meeting that night, but there's not, I'm confusing myself. All right, so um, you're all invited to that. And then um, I also wanted to remind everybody that Monday, February 17th is President's Day, and it is a municipal holiday, so offices will be closed that day. All right. Um, uh, and, oh. Sorry, I actually, and I don't know why, how I missed this, on Sunday uh, the 15th, uh, starting at 9.30 a.m., we'll be holding our first, uh, this will be our neighborhood meeting to discuss uh, the permit parking uh, task force uh, report. And we'll be soliciting input from the neighbors and uh, business businesses in that community uh, to get their, to solicit their input on, um, on their parking needs and any concerns, address any concerns that they may have. Do you Did, want something to add? I, I just, I wasn't sure I heard it. It's, it's being held at the Arts Council. At the Arts Council, yes. And it's for the Jackson Witherspoon yes. neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, I thought you got the memo, sorry. I'll make sure uh, we send it out again. And are there any staff announcements, Mr. DeShield? Okay. Um, is there anybody here from the League of Women Voters? No? Okay, well, we have a proclamation for the League of Women Voters. It's the, um, um, I know a lot of us know this year is the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage, and it's also the 100th anniversary of the League of Women Voters. So we have a proclamation um, celebrating that organization. Um, and I miss the days when they used to moderate the presidential debates. Um, uh, but uh, it's a really great organization and we're lucky to have them active in Princeton. So we will make sure this gets to them and you can read the text of it online. Um, and next um, we have a presentation from Palmer Square Management on the events for 2020. Hi, thank you for having me tonight. Um, so. 2020's plan is just to keep Palmer Square and downtown Princeton active. Um, we've been trying really hard to do that. So uh, if you haven't noticed, we put a skating rink out in December. Uh, in the month of December alone, we had 2,000 people come through there. So, and it was only open on weekends and holiday week. Uh, so we consider that pretty successful, uh, especially since it's, well, fake ice, and it's also the first year. So that's gonna continue through the end of February. Um, January, the weather wasn't as cooperative for us. It rained every weekend in January. So we're hoping that the last couple weekends we have in February, it'll keep it going. We had an event last weekend uh, with Princeton University. They brought the hockey team out. We had Skate with the Tiger. We did Paint and Skate with Cranberry Station Gallery. So we've been trying to do creative things to keep that going through the winter months. Um, the next regular event will be the Egg Hunt, which we have uh, April 4th. Um, we have the egg hunt, we're participating in Pi Day, uh, Nassau Lynn's wedding showcase, Palmer Square takes an active role in that. In the past couple of years, we'll set up outside and um, all of the vendors around Palmer Square will participate. It's not necessarily 
on the green, but it's a really good opportunity for everybody to get involved because the more weddings they have, the, the busier our uh, tenants are. Um, and then we go into the spring events. One of the things that we've been trying to do over the past three years is partner with more community organizations and groups um, because if we're part of their event and we're sponsoring them, not only are we helping them, but you know, it's kind of a win-win. We're bringing in um, entertainment and we're also helping you know, somebody else in the community. So uh, we're working closer with the Arts Council for Community University this year. We looked at floor plans and ways that we can move the event down through Palmer Square East um, to bring some more foot traffic to the other side of the, uh, the square. We're gonna move some of the vendor tables away from our stores so people can still see them and put them on the other side of the street. We're gonna have some um, active uh, craft stations and uh, concerts on the on the green and down in the street uh, but we also talked to the Arts Council about participating in Mile of Music which is something they're gonna start this May they're gonna have music all the way down Nassau Street through the square Heinz Plaza in different areas uh, so we would take on a sponsorship role in that and um, help contribute to the cause it would be every third Friday I believe from May through October uh, we've also talked to a lot of uh, school groups, and we did this around the holiday time. We made a lot of contacts. We've invited them all back. Um, you know, they came out and they sang carols, but why not have your spring concert um, here? Why not play a, a performance that the school groups, the local school groups bring the local families? So um, we've also worked with some of our tenants. I, I don't have all the dates on here, but I know Jazams has come to me and said, hey, would Palmer Square work with... Um, one of the schools to do their book fair and different things and we we really like that because we get to bring all the families out and um, you know help help different organizations along the way um, so mile of music this year for girls night out we're still gonna have the event but we're gonna change it up a little bit more focus on locals um, more focus on shopping and a less focus on you know the free food that's on the on the green we're gonna try and put more things in the stores more activities um, and the restaurants are gonna work with different tenants around the square they're also gonna do some some things outside of their own locations versus getting everybody to come to the tents on the green we're trying to get them dispersed around the square so there's still gonna be an event it's still gonna be that Thursday in May um, but it's gonna have a different name, uh, probably closer to Locals Night Out and a lot more activities actually in the store. Um, the Summer Block Party is uh, June 19th, looks like a great date for the Summer Block Party. Uh, we've been working with Jazams on that, that's their event, um, but they are entering their 25th year in business, so they want to have a kickoff party. This is their 25th, um, it's not their 25th birthday, it would be their 24th birthday, but you know, it, it's starting that year and they wanna do it big this year. So um, the, the event will be a fun kickoff to their 25th anniversary, which is really uh, an awesome uh, feat. The dueling pianos that we ran last year, we ran it on three Thursdays in the summer. Last year it rained every Thursday in July, so it got pushed to the Thursdays in August overwhelming the amount of people that came out um, it was it was wild you had you had so many great people a wonderful audience so we um, we increased the amount of times we're gonna have them back this year so we're gonna try and run them five Thursdays we're starting in July after the 4th of July week we're running through the middle of August um, expecting that we'll at least have one rain date and then it'll push it to the end of August and hopefully we'll get through the whole the whole summer with um, music on Thursday nights um, We've got story time on the green. That's just random dates. We're going to work with our tenants and with the we, last year we did a couple with Princeton uh, Summer Theater uh, and different organizations to just do story time on the green. We have our summer movie series. Um, we haven't selected movies this year. Last year you guys gave me a, a, a recommendation here. It went over you know overwhelmingly well. That was Coco. Um, so this year we were thinking of putting out a poll, putting out a couple of the popular ones, and letting letting everybody vote, throw it up on social media, make a little fun of it. Um, but the dates are booked because I got a discount. So we have the dates on the calendar for July 17th and August 14th. Uh, we'll have our annual summer sale. Um, and then Music Fest is in September. This year we're looking at a theme that's gonna be rock um, through the years. So we might start with a big band, you know, like Roaring 20 style. We'll do a little doo-wop. Um, we've got Motown in the mix. We've already booked a couple of bands and we'll end it with, you know, 80s, 90s, and today's. So 
Um, Music Fest has turned into a family-friendly event, um, and we're, you know, it's really starting to take off. More and more people coming out with their entire family instead of just, um, you know, the, the parents or just coming out to listen to the jazz. It really did turn into more of a, um, you know, street festival versus just a, you know, a music event. So, um, we had last year very popular, the flamenco dancing we did in front of Mediterra Fountain. Um, it got pushed back once because it was raining. Uh, but the day that we did have it, there was, you know, not too many people showed up for it. But I can tell you, hundreds of people stopped and grabbed a seat because we ran out of seats. And it, it was really awesome. So we'll do that again this year. We did that um, to coincide with the Hispanic Heritage Month in October. Um, we also worked with the Princeton Public Library on their Unruly Sounds Festival last year. We, uh, they work with Princeton University and Un Unruly Sounds Organization. They suggested we move it over from Heinz Plaza because it was very large. Totally different crowd than we were used to, but a lot of fun, and it's great to bring out the student musicians. Um, so we hope to do that again this year. Um, and then we're into uh, Glam Fest, which is our fashion show, so it's really where we get to focus on all of the fashion and beauty retailers on the square. Um, that would be outside with a rain date, so that way if it rains, uh, last year we moved it into the hotel, and I just feel like it would have been much better if we kept it outside and had a rain date on the books. Um, of course, the Halloween parade, and then we're right into holiday. So we do, um, you know, hopefully we'll be bringing back the skating rink uh, next year because it, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, we did so much more this year than we've ever done before from gingerbreads on display to, you know, it was a different year. There was a lot more going on, uh, you know, a bigger song and a dance to get people out here, but we're just going to keep doing it and keep trying to bring them out. So, um, but a lot of, a lot of holiday events on the calendar. That's really it. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Can I add something? I uh, actually, something that was left off your list that I want to thank you for. Uh, last year, you collaborated with Human Services uh, to host uh, uh, during Welcoming Week our culture sharing night. Yes. And there was a great opportunity to get uh, to have our neighbors from our immigrant community to have an opportunity to interact and also show off their culture. So uh, depending this year, it's always in September. So depending okay. if there's a availability, perhaps we could uh, do that again. That was, on, that was on my radar. I just haven't had a date or anything from yeah. anybody. But yes, and I don't know if the date. do that again. It was great to be included in those. Yeah, it's in September. I don't things. know that we have the week yet. It's during a whole yep. week. But it'd uh, be great if we can collaborate on that again. Yeah, we, we enjoyed being part of that. So. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to um, mention, if you haven't been approached already, the Bicycle Advisory Committee ha um, purchased some event bike racks uh, for last year's community, and we're looking for other opportunities to provide valet bike parking. So for some of the larger events, like the Music Fest, and if you have any other occasions when you find that um, more people are showing up on bicycles than there seem to be parking spots for, let us know. Yes, that actually um, came up when I met a couple weeks ago with Molly from Sustainable Princeton. We talked about bringing them in for some of the, um, the larger events. That would be awesome. Great. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank you for all that you and, and Palmer Square uh, do, and especially for things like bringing in the, the ice rink. It was something that I think was incredibly creative, and we hear over and over again that it's experiences that draw people in. So I just want to thank you for your creativity and for using those resources to bring people into the town because it benefits, as you know, not only Palmer Square, but the rest of the community as well. So thank you for your thank work. Thank you for saying that. I enjoy it. I was just going to reiterate the same thing they just said. So thank you very much. You put a lot of energy and work into it, and we appreciate that. Thanks. Great, thanks. Okay, um, so now we come to um, comments from the public for items not already on the agenda. And for those of you who might have gotten here a little bit late, if you are here for any of the Thanet redevelopment items on the agenda, we're actually moving those to February 19th. Council will be having a special meeting, so we're going to be moving the public hearing on the ordinance and the three resolutions will all be taken up on the 19th. But there are people who signed up 
to speak to those. Um, and so if you're interested, if you're here tonight and you want to speak, um, this would be the time to do it. We're going to start with people who've signed up and then I'll open it up to anybody else. So, um, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Bernie Miller, 34 Governor's Lane. And I speak as a resident, longtime resident of Governor's Lane. I'm going to limit my uh, comments to three items that are in the plan that will be at a later date considered by the planning board and by council. Uh, these three items are items that will have a physical impact on Governor's Lane and the residents of Governor's Lane. Uh, there are many items in the plan that others will comment on, I'm quite certain, but I'm going to limit my comments to those three in the interest of time. Those three are uh, screening, setback, and building height. Uh, first of all, in reading the, the report, and I've gone through it a few times, I found a section in the report that pertains to the provision of screening for the RSA tract but could not find a comparable section in the report that pertained to screening for the ISA or IRA tract. Um, and I would ask that perhaps uh, council take a look at this because screening of both tracts is quite important. Secondly, uh, the section of the report that deals with property setback identifies setback from Thanet Road, from Terhune Road, and from side and rear of the property. However, the side and rear of the property are not delineated. Setback from Thanet Road is quite clear. Setback from uh, Terhune Road is quite clear. You can deduce what is meant by the side and rear setback because they're the same, but at a later date, they may not be the same. And I ask that the council consider the possibility of clearly identifying what is the side and what is the rear of the property. And the third and the most important is the maximum building height of uh, five stories or 65 feet. I would suggest that a building that is five stories high or 65 feet high is completely inconsistent with the character of the neighborhood in and around Terhune and Harrison Street. There's nothing that approaches that in that neighborhood. Uh, it would be like taking the math physics tower on campus and putting it into the Thanet Drive property, or taking one Palmer Square, or putting it into the Thanet Drive property. And I ask that you give some careful consideration to the maximum height limitation and whether or not it is really consistent with the character of the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Next is um, Sam Greer. Is Sam still here? No. Nope. Um, and Harriet Greer. So she might have left too. Um, Polly Griffin. Good evening and thank you. I, uh, I represent the board of the Homeowners Association of Governor Slang. Can you just make sure you're speaking directly into the mic? How's that better? Okay. I represent the board of the Homeowners Association of Governor's Lane, which is a 65-home neighborhood that abuts the Stanup property um, that has been on that site for 30 years. So, and and have has had no neighbors to speak of uh, during that 30-year period. And I too have have concerns 
four that we'll hear about next week because we'll come to this meeting. But I wanted to put these on your radar tonight, if I could. Uh, the first is definitely the screening. Um, as Bernie Miller has suggested, the um, far back right side of this property is ad adjacent, abuts the Governor's Lane property. And there's no screening there now because the option for screening is on the, on the it's wetlands that abuts the property and, and the only option for screening is, is on the property of the Thanet parcel. So we're not able to provide our own screening on, on, on that parcel and we very much want the uh, developer to, uh, to uh, provide screening in that, in that place and we're glad to work with them on it. Um, the uh, second concern is lights. There is, from the diagrams that we've seen so far, which may not be final diagrams, there is a long parking lot um, that is to be lit. And so we just wonder about the height of those lights, given the very high uh, proposal for, you know, for the 65-foot you know, building. So screening and lighting. Um, and the height of the buildings, and and then finally, this is this is a partnership thing. Um, our service from Comcast and from Verizon is spotty to infuriating. Somewhere on that uh, on that continuum, and so uh, if if there there is a way that we can work with this developer to improve both cell service and Comcast service. We, we would like very much to do that. They may not know that this is an issue, and it is such an issue we have meltdowns periodically. Our other concern is just like a, a, a neighborly concern that everyone has when something like this happens, and that is we have many residents in Governor's Lane who work from their home, in home offices, and that's common, as you know, a common occurrence uh, in this particular work environment. And, and their concern is the noise that comes when you, you know, take up asphalt and bring in things. And so, any, and, and there's noise connected with construction where we live in the real world. But we, we would hope that there could be some thought and consideration to the, the daily loud banging uh, that, that comes with that kind of construction. You'll hear this again next week, but I, uh, I wanted to put it on your radar tonight. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. And I can let you know, um, we've already been in communication with Avalon Bay about the cell service. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they recognize that's something that's important for them to do for their yeah. own yeah. residents. So hopefully that will be a side benefit of this project is better yes. cell service. Um, and we've also been speaking to them about extra screening um, and we will take another look at some of these um, issues that were raised tonight. Um, I also heard from the Greers about, I think they, one or both of them work from home. Um, yeah. So we can try to get a schedule at least, um, if Avalon Bay can give an estimate of how long the construction is, is going to take and, and help people plan around that. Right, there are, there are two people in that household that work from home, but there are, you know, we probably have 10 other homes that have home offices that people, it's not that they work there sometimes, it's that's where they work. Okay, okay. Thanks. thank you very much. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak to an item that's not already on the agenda? Okay, I'm gonna um, close public comment then and come to reports and I'll start again on my right with Ms. Byrne Lambros, any reports? No reports. Councilman Niederkain? Also no reports. Councilman Cohen? No reports. None. Okay, all right. Um, I have a couple reports. Um, the um, first one is that um, Councilwoman Perone Lambros and I um, had the opportunity to go on a tour of the DPW facilities um, with Dan Van Matter and it was definitely um, 
illuminating. Um, for those of you who haven't been on the tour, um, I would suggest that at some point you make some time to go on it to have an understanding of um, some of the challenges that Public Works has. Um, they are in the process of, um, of planning better facilities at the John Street um, location. And we'll be hearing more about that um, probably in the months to come. But um, clearly, it's, um, I know there's been a lot of talk of, um, of kids crammed in tight conditions. And um, you know, with the Public Works um, employees, they're larger than kindergartners. And they are crammed together in space that is way too small, um, using lockers that don't even fit the uniforms that we have. Um, and so some investment is long overdue. Um, and it's also, there's, um, there's some really exciting, interesting things on that tour. So we got to look at the old incinerator, um, which is super creepy. If anybody wants to do a horror movie in New Jersey, that would yeah. be an excellent location. Yeah, I went in with trepidation going in there. <laughs> um, Liz went first. Yeah, and, um, and then there's also a building that has all of the signs. That's really fun to look at. I'll post a picture up on yeah, Facebook, but it has yeah. all of the old street signs and stop signs. Are, and, are uh, all the old parking meters gone yet? The because old parking meters Councilman are gone. Councilman Williams and I went, there was like a room that was just completely full of right. parking right. meters. Right, yeah. Um, um, so and anyways, um, th there'll be more on that. And also the cold storage will be coming back to Council too, um, hopefully before the end of this year. Um, also, this was a, um, last week was a big week for our fire department. Um, and I don't know if Mr. DeShield will have more to report on the move to the combo department, um, but the first week seemed to have gone um, smoothly. And I just wanna shout out to all our volunteers um, who are the heart and soul of that department and who are really helping to make this transition um, work well. And um, finally, um, I wanted to report that the police department um, are um, piloting with body cameras um, for the next couple months um, before they settle on what company to use. Um, but if you see officers out in the community, um, I think we're a little bit of a latecomer to this, um, but don't be surprised to um, see uh, body camera um, on our officers and that's something that will be rolling out to the whole department um, later this year. I was going to mention if I recall correctly uh, the officers will be letting the public know that they there's a camera that's and right. yes yeah, so, so it's not going to be candid camera. Um, and are there any um, staff reports Mr. DeShield did you have any reports? A little bit of center, but I do want to uh, just mention the, um, um, as the mayor indicated, um, the last week, <clears throat> last week we had our um, full-time firefighters start. Um, they began last week with a week of orientation um, with all the uh, firefighters at the firehouse. There was an open house on Wednesday. Um, we now have them. They're now doing their 24-hour shifts. Um, they'll be working a 24-48 schedule, which means uh, 24 hours on, 48 hours off. We probably have a crew of two over there now. Um, and we'll be monitoring uh, the time uh, just to make sure and see if we show improvement as we've um, put these new firefighters on. Um, and we'll continue to monitor and we'll provide you reports as we go along. But uh, it was a great start um, last week with the new group. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we'll move on to the first public hearing of this evening, Ordinance 2020-6, an ordinance of the municipality of Princeton. Oh, sorry. Well, so the, there's just a letter um, under correspondence on PFARS. We don't need to take any action on it. It's, um, it's sort of a basic letter just recognizing that PFARS is providing first aid and rescue service to the municipality. Um, but just since I'm signing something on behalf of the town, I wanted council to just be informed of that. Um, uh, so ordinance 2020-6, an ordinance of the municipality of Princeton authorizing the acquisition and subsequent conveyance of a 28% interest in the 394 Ridgeview Road, block 2001, lot 22, open space, 
parcel. And I would like to open up the public hearing for this ordinance. And I know that um, Leah Mastropo would like to speak on this. Uh, before oh. that happens, I'm oh. going to recuse myself oh, right. as the watershed. Yep. Uh, my employer has an interest in this property. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Leah Mastropolo uh, with the Watershed Institute. Um, can you hear me all right? I just want to thank the council for considering uh, the acquisition of this property at 394 Ridgeview Road. Um, as you know, the property contains about two acres of important wetlands that drain to Mountain Brook, which is uh, a category one stream in the headwaters of the Stony Brook Millstone watershed. Um, Wetlands like this one are really important for regulating downstream flooding and for filtering out pollution. Uh, the property also provides um, important habitat for a number of threatened and endangered species, including bobcat, uh, barred owl, um, northern long-eared bat, and a number of others. So uh, for all these reasons, uh, we have identified this as a really important parcel for conservation and permanent protection. Um, and I just want to say that by contributing to protecting to this property, um, you're going to be helping us to preserve clean water and prevent flooding in the watershed and for everyone who lives downstream. So I just want to say thank you very much to the council and we very much support this ordinance. Thanks. Thank you. And um, I should mention that the um, municipality's contribution for this um, is $50,000 and we were able to receive Green Acres funding for $50,000, um, but we still have a commitment to make sure that there is um, public access um, required by Green Acres. Um, unfortunately, they require that public access to be cars, so that's something that we're still um, working out. So there's probably going to be some expense there, but we're very happy to have received the grant um, that covers our uh, $50,000 pledge for this. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Yeah, Chris. Hello, uh, my name is Christopher Barr. I live at 211 Ridgeview Road, and I'm speaking on behalf of Ridgeview Conservancy. Uh, we are a group of neighbors that organized um, to preserve uh, woods and wetlands in this particularly special portion of the Princeton Ridge. And we organized in part uh, out of the effort to preserve this particular wetlands at Lot 22. And we also want to thank the mayor and the council for your interest and support in uh, preserving Lot 22 at 394 Ridgeview. As Leah said, it's a very special um, uh, tract uh, ecologically. Um, I would just add to what she said that it is an integral part of a larger wetland structure that extends over 20 acres in this section of the ridge. And so preserving this is, is uh, part of the effort to preserve this larger uh, structure. And it supports the headwaters of Mountain Brook, which is one of two streams that flows down from the ridge into uh, Mountain Lake Preserve. And uh, in addition to providing critical habitat for a wide range of species and a wildlife corridor for this section of the ridge, it's also an important connector between uh, green space and preserved uh, lands in the Ridgeview Woods, uh, Mountain Lakes, and the Woodfield Reservation. Um, we are extremely enthused to be approaching the point where uh, the uh, purchase of this property for permanent preservation uh, is uh, coming to fruition. This process has been underway, as many of you know, um, for almost 18 months. And it has involved a very productive uh, collaboration among Princeton Municipality, the Watershed Institute, Friends of Princeton Open Space, Mercer County, New Jersey DEP's Green Acres Program, uh, our community group, Ridgeview Conservancy, as well as a contribution from DNR Greenway. And collectively, uh, we've either raised or contributed over $575,000 to support this. And finally, uh, we want to thank the current owner of Lot 22, uh, Mr. Lee Ping An and Ridgeview Property LLC for working with us and for his patience through this process. So thanks very much. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak 
um, as part of the public hearing for this ordinance? Okay, seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council. And is there a motion to approve ordinance 2020-6? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a motion. And may I make just a comment, just to thank the conservancy and the neighbors. Um, I watched the process go through from the beginning when you all approached the zoning board and really educated us in your activism and your passion. And I just wanna thank you for that. So I very enthusiastically make that motion. Excellent. Um, it's been moved by Councilwoman um, Prone Lambros. Is there Second. a second? I second it. Seconded by Mr. Williamson. <clears throat> Any other further comment from Council? All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Prone Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergay? Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Braga? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. All right, um, the ordinance passes unanimously. Congratulations, congratulations. And Eve, you can come back now. Someone let Eve know, yep. All right, um, and as we've mentioned a couple times before, um, we're going to be deferring the public hearing on ordinance 2020-7 to the evening of Wednesday February 19th, um, and that meeting will also start at 7 p.m. Um, next, we have an ordinance introduction for this evening, Ordinance 2020-8, an ordinance by the Municipality of Princeton, adding alternate members to the Civil Rights Commission and the Princeton Bike Advisory Committee, and amending Chapter 2 of the Code of the Borough of Princeton, New Jersey, 1974. Is, um, there a motion to introduce? So moved. Oh. Second. Moved by Mr. Cohen and seconded by Ms. Fraga. Are there any comments or questions on this ordinance? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We have a lot of volunteers. Um, it's a great problem to have. Um, and we've been suffering with having uh, not enough spaces for everybody who wants to step up. So this gives us a couple more spots. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Perel Lambros? Yes. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Braga? Yes. Mr. Williamson? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Um, so the ordinance has been introduced and the public hearing will be on February 24th, 2020. Um, we are going to be um, holding the first three resolutions, 2053, 2072, and 2073 and taking those up at our meeting on Wednesday, February 19th. Um, I know there's somebody who wants to speak to resolution 2074 who's going to arrive here at 815. So if there is a motion to amend the agenda to take up resolution 2074 at the end of the meeting, I move that we amend the agenda to uh, push that resolution back to the end of the resolutions. All right, is there a second to amend the agenda? Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so we'll move on to 2075, <coughs> resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with the law office of Karen L. Casey LLC for litigation services for the Zoning Board of Adjustment in an amount not to exceed $25,000. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve, yes. Can yeah. I ask a question, I'm yeah. sorry. Is this for a specific um, case or this is just general litigation services? No, this is for the 23 Lee LLC versus uh, zoning board so, case. So since we don't, why, why would we be authorizing it if we don't know that we're gonna be litigating it? I'm sorry, I, didn't, I couldn't hear you. I, I'm wondering why we're authorizing um, payment because I, I thought we made the decision that we are gonna well, this is for Karen representing the zoning board, which is separate and apart from the ordinance. There's also a challenge to the actions of the zoning board, and that's Karen Casey will be representing the zoning board on that. I, I think we're not authorizing payment. We're authorizing, yeah, you're um, just authorizing the the work. budgeting for it. Yep. So payment would be after the services were provided. And we feel like that's necessary? I mean, action has Just been initiated. In case. The, the plaintiff has initiated the action, so someone yeah, you has don't, to. Yeah, you don't have the discretion not to defend this. Right, so we have to respond to it. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. Okay, so um, the resolution has been moved by Ms. Pern-Lambros. Is there a second? Second. second? Seconded by Ms. Fraga. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution passes unanimously. Next is 2076, resolution authorizing the award of a contract to Sustainable Princeton for 2020 to provide various services and programs to assist the municipality to achieve its sustainability goals in an amount not to exceed $31,620. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Ms. Niedergang. Second. Seconded by Ms. Fraga. And I just wanted to comment that um, Sustainable Princeton has been a really terrific partner. Um, and I think of the many money we spend, this is um, always feels like it's money well spent. So thank you for the work that you do. Um, anybody else like to comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution passes unanimously. Next is 2077, resolution approving the professional services agreement to Gerald Muller, Esquire of the law firm of Miller, Porter and Muller, PC, for legal counsel to the Princeton Planning Board, not to exceed $37,000. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. It's been moved by Mr. Cohen and seconded by Mr. Williamson. Um, any comments on this one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution passes unanimously, and next we come to the consent agenda, which contains items of a routine nature, passed by a single vote. Are there any items anybody would like removed from the consent agenda? Uh, not removed, but I do uh, on item resolution 20-79 uh, for the complete counts committee. We have the same problem where we have a lot of volunteers, but we're still uh, finalizing the list, so I didn't get the list in time finalized, so I will we'll want to hold that till the next meeting. Um, okay, so, but there's other names on there. No, there's no names for the, just removing for the complete count okay. committees. Um, there's no names at all. I see. Do we need to so, remove that from the consent agenda yeah, and amend yeah, it? Just amend okay. It. Yeah. All right. So, and that will help run out the clock a little bit. So why don't we have a motion to approve the consent agenda except for item number two. So moved. Moved by Ms. Niedergang. And Second. is there a second? Seconded. Seconded right. by Mr. Williamson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The consent agenda passes and now we'll take up resolution 20-79 which is the resolution authorizing appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. And is there a motion to approve that resolution with the change that we're going to remove where it mentions the complete counts committee? And I would like to move that. Okay, it's moved by Ms. Braga, seconded by Mr. Williamson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? <laughs> Perfect, we changed the agenda. We have one item left, which is your item. So now we're gonna go back to um, Resolution 20-74, which is resolution naming the Stony Brook pedestrian bridge in honor of Helmut Schwab. And um, before we open up um, public comment on this, um, for those of you um, who knew Helmut, he was uh, definitely a man with a vision. Um, and he had a really beautiful vision for this town, which included this um, pedestrian bridge and for those of you who are still in the audience, if you've never walked um, down on that path, um, it's a really, really beautiful spot in Princeton, um, totally transporting and we have um, many people to thank for that bridge, but especially how much Wab. So um, I'm very happy to um, have had this suggestion from the Friends in Princeton Open Space and to um, be able to name this bridge in his honor. Um, so is there a uh, motion to introduce to put it on the table? So moved. Moved by Ms. Sachs. Second it. Second it, yeah. seconded by Ms. Fraga. And I'd like to open it up to public comment. Mr. Berlin. Hello. I'm Ronald Berlin. I'm a board member of the Friends of Princeton Open Space. And I had the, I've had the pleasure of knowing Helmut for, oh, 30 years or so. He began as a client of mine. About 20 years ago, we were, we self-assigned the task of uh, finding ways of joining 
existing paths and, and trails in Princeton. And uh, Helmut and I were assigned the, um, the connection between Rosedale Road and 206. And I was the guy who went out and sort of trudged a, a possible pathway and came back very excited. It's really a pretty extraordinary, wild, you know, far away feeling that you get along that, that the Stony Brook there. But I came back with the unfortunate news that in order to make this connection, there would have to be a crossing of the Stony Brook. And I sort of expressed my regrets. It's kind of too bad. This would have been really a nice thing to do. And Helmut just embraced this challenge. It really surprised me because I thought, we're going to have to leave this one alone. We won't be able to make that connection. And he stuck to it. So I'm going to just read, if I may, this brief statement that uh, Wendy Mager, the president of Friends of Princeton Open Space, wrote. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Friends of Princeton Open Space, we are very pleased and grateful that the municipality is honoring Helmut Schwab by naming after him the pedestrian bridge across the Stony Brook. Helmut made many contributions to open space in Princeton throughout his many years as a trustee and trustee emeritus of FOPOS. He conceived the idea of this bridge as part of an initiative to connect our existing parks and open spaces with one another so that people could go on long rambles such as Helmut and his wife Eva so enjoyed. Helmut was so enthusiastic about the idea of the bridge that he persuaded everyone he approached that it must happen, enlisting supporters from the Princeton University Engineering School to the Township Engineering Department to his fellow board members, including me. I'm sure I speak for many others when I say that Helmut is one of the people who encouraged, persuaded, and yes, even nagged me to do things that I am now proud I did. It is truly appropriate for him to be honored by the community for which he did so much and comforting to think that future generations will see his name on the beautiful bridge that would not exist without his tireless efforts. Thanks very much for doing this. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Any opposed? Resolution passes unanimously, unanimously and we'll be working with FOPOS for um, the marker that will go out there. Yes, thank you very much for that. Um, all right, and is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. All right, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>